Yo, what is going on ladies and gents around? Welcome back to a brand new video and potentially a brand new series. Today I've gone back over a ranked game from today and I've done a full voiceover covering everything from items to positioning and even alt usage. Now this content does take me much longer to produce so if you do like it, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. All those amazing things for bees to help me support the channel and obviously let me know that this is the content you would like to see moving forward. Anyway ladies and gents, hope you do enjoy it and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day and as always, I See you again tomorrow. Peace, nerds. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this scenario is look at the draft. Now, I need you to imagine that Tyra is the last pick and that the Fiora is the second pick and Tyra has not been locked in yet because I chose the character for Tuki since we can take the Fiora early in the draft and then see what we want later on in the draft in terms of DPS for the counter. So this is quite an important thing to do in ranked is to actually draft in order of not particularly what you need, but what the team needs. So you can take a healer quite early, see what the enemies take and then take a healer, or sorry, take the DPS as a counter to whatever they have because of course a healer is never gonna be necessarily a, a counter. They're very strong in the meta so you can take them very early and the draft now looking at the enemy's draft the choices that i was thinking in my head were going to be tiberius cassie or tyra now you can look at things like maybe androxis or canissa or even victor in this scenario but i didn't think those were going to have the potential to kill and survive as well as i would have wanted to uh, the canissa would be nice but if the Yagrath pushes me I'm going to teleport away I'm going to be quite useless because the teleport angles on this map if the Yagrash pushes me I'm going to be very far and not have a good angle towards the point and of course Yagrath can then just chase me down once more again after that um, in terms of things like the Victor Victor is very susceptible to getting Makoa hooked and then he's just going to be burst instantly because he doesn't really have much survivability after that point the Cassie my thought process for the Cassie and for the Tiberius is that they have very very large hitbox head hit, headshot hitboxes on the enemy team from the Makoa and the Yagarath and we want to be able to abuse that as much as possible and we have no one really on our team besides the Barrack and the Fury that's going to abuse that and of course they're not going to be the ones that are going to be bursting these characters down very very fast so I ended up going for the Tyra pick now I was pre-warned to not take the Tyra from the team but in my mind it was the greatest choice uh, if I'm hooked from the Makoa with a Tyra at least you have that life rip capabilities high amounts of DPS to the headshots and you can still try and survive using your dr which is why in my mind she works better here than like say a victor once he's hooked he's going to die a little bit faster after that of course we have the headshot capabilities on the yagarath and the fire from tyra as well which is very very strong as a combination to kill the yagarath and then lastly for the lian um, we have the damage reduction on grenades again the other characters i was speaking about don't have these things they kind of have one thing for each of these characters but they don't have it all let's say for example the kanissa has the an escape and the the um, Cassie has an escape, but the Cassie doesn't have the headshots. Uh, the Kinesa doesn't have the survivability. Um, you know, it's, it's all about thinking about what is going to be the greatest character in that scenario for you. And in this case, for me, it was going to be Tyra. Anyway, now let's move on to the game. So the first thing here is that I've gone for the cauterize and I'm deciding whether I'm going to be picking the next item first. So I didn't actually use my 200 credits at the start, which you would normally do into putting into something like life rip or to resilience. But I wasn't sure whether the, gro the Grover was going to be consistent enough with his right clicks for me to want to get the resilience or the Makoa was going to be consistent enough with his hooks for me to want to get nimble as a means to escape or maybe even life rip as a means to escape when I actually get hooked. So that's why I haven't bought a second item at the start of this. We're only going to push to a certain degree here. We're not going to push any further. We want to make sure we're going to find out where the enemy characters are and where they're going to be positioned and make sure that I'm in a safe position away from them. And as you can see, my only purpose right now is to try and burn this Dragorath on the point. Thankfully, the Yagarath is not very good at moving from the point, um, as some Yagaraths tend to be, and that's going to lead to us being able to burn them here. Now, I see the Lian is on my down butt, so I'm going to start pushing towards the right side here to make sure that she has less pressure on my healer. And of course, now I see the Makoa on the left side. Now, Makoa, I need to make sure I keep a consistent distance from unless he's used his hook. Once he's used his hook, I can push him a little bit more um, safely. But obviously, as now the time progresses, again, I'm going to have to now start trying to be a little bit safer against the Makoa. Now we have a pick on the Makoa. The Yagarath is back. Gonna burn the Yagarath as fast as we can. Reload while she's using her DR, because while she's using her DR, obviously I'm not gonna get the damage output that I want. Finish Leon. Get our ultimate, pop this early, and unfortunately we get killed now by the Grover. The Grover Cripple comes through. We don't have the resilience. I'm held in place now for the Grover damage and for the Yagarath damage. I can't peek in and out, and unfortunately that leads now to our first death. Because of, obviously, the Grover being the reason that we died here, we're going to be going into the Resilience. As I said, I want to see what was going to be the main component of the enemy composition that I needed to counteract. And obviously, as I said now, 
being the Grover was the first thing to kill me with that resilient without that resilience I think that was the most important pickup for me to get onto the defense here now um, already a little bit low on the defense here gonna try and position myself around mid here now that my hook is down I can be a little bit aggressive against him we can see already the resilience coming in a little bit handy with the Grover cripples so we're gonna be pushing that very very strong to continuously increase our resilience prowess so that every time we do get crippled by this Grover it's not gonna be as much of a detriment as it would be without it of course now we get our ultimate up again because the worm doesn't really do much and she is just allowing me to charge out consistently uh, we're going to throw down the fire to the left side here. This stops the Makoa and the Vivian, sorry, the Makoa and the Lian having any further pressure to push onto my support characters. It wasn't just for damage, it was just for area denial. Now we have these two on the back foot, they've pushed back out. They have no cooldowns now for a little while, so we're a little bit safer to concentrate on a different section of the map now. The Makoa, for some reason, continues to push in which is a bit weird. Obviously, I just throw down the firebomb. We get them very, very low. I try to push in here, but the Makoa, sorry, the Grover then ults, and that becomes no longer safe for me. They're obviously going to all be full HP. There would not have been enough core eyes. And of course, now that means that I just have to retreat. We're getting nice heals here. Very good heals from my team. Could have very easily died there. Get some fire down the Yagrath. Great ult from the, uh, the barrack to stabilize us here. They don't have much pressure, but it's just all of us are a little bit low. And that stabilization from the barrack ult is very important sometimes. It doesn't always have to be a clutch barrack ult. Just something oh, to stabilize the team can be very, very potent. Just forcing the uh, damage onto the Yagarath here. You see me every time I get my ult with this match, I'm pretty much just popping it straight away. It's not an ult that I need to have for any other purpose other than to just put damage out. It's not that great at saving the point. It's not that great at winning us the point, And it charges up so fast against this Yagarath that I can just dump it out whenever it needs to be used. We only have a few seconds left, so we're saving our Molotov now for when the Worm returns to the point. So we can flame the point. Again, hook down on the Makoa now. Worm returns. Flame straight onto them. They use the DR. We're going to be using our right clicks as often as possible here, because obviously that gives us a lot of damage reduction in of, of itself. Now, we have lost a very big part of our defense here with the Barrack. Um, they're getting very close to pushing. Ash uses ult, which is a great ult. This is going to help us stabilize for a little while again. Another stabilization ult. Doesn't do much else besides that. Now, unfortunately, for some reason here, all of our tanks end up leaving the point. So I use my ult and I end up dying for it. So I use my ult in that scenario there to gain the increased movement speed to try and burst down the Makara a little bit so he leave me alone and just try and be able to juke shots. Unfortunately, our tanks do step off the point here and they manage to push it in. Moving towards the second point now, we have gone into Cauterize level two and into Resilience level two. I'm going to go into the full Resilience throughout this match because it's so important. Again, taking the same position in. They take the same position as last round. We get the nice easy dismounts on them to make sure they haven't got too much pressure. I see Mako is trying to push on me from the left hand side here. So I'm peeking more towards the back end. So he ends up hooking me, which he does. And as least I have my right clicks available so that I'm not going to die as soon as Go he hooks on. me because of that huge damage reduction that I has. Now that he doesn't have his hook, I can push in with a little bit of aggression. But then as soon as I get uh, pushed here, I need to start falling back. But uh, my Damba gets a very nice ult kill there. Now, as I see the Yagrath returning as well, you see me falling back. I'm going to put the fire on the point. Unfortunately, the fire isn't in a great position, but the Barracol E is there instead just to create pressure against the Yagarath on the point. We're very low here, just hiding in the corner, hoping that we're going to be able to get a little bit of a heal. Now that we've healed again, we're going to start pressurizing someone else on the point. Again, you can see consistently my positioning against the Makoa is always of a level where I don't believe he's going to be able to hit a hook on me. Now, sometimes, obviously, they get these very long-range hooks, but they're unlikely, of course, and not something you can always consistently rely on. So staying at that much of a distance is very, very useful to me. Now, as you can see already, that Resilience Level 2 coming in insanely clutch on this point fight here with that Grover putting his right click onto me and me actually being able to move. As the Leanne pushes in, I am just ready to burst her. And again, I used the Molotov to the right-hand side where the Makoa was to just deny area space. It was not to do damage. It was not to get a kill. It was just to stop the pressure that he was trying to exert onto my back line whilst we also had the Leanne pushing from the other side, which basically allows me to deal with one of the characters whilst I know I'm safe from the other one. Makoa used his ulti here. I'm going to use mine. Burn down this Jagarath. As I said, I'm just going to pop this. Every single chance that I get this ultimate, I'm going to pop it. Makoa very low here. Unfortunately, I no longer have an angle on them. Oh. Of course, get their shield up. So just a little bit of unlucko there that I wasn't able to get the Makoa kill. Now hook is down. I can push with a little bit of aggression. But I see there's three of them there. There's no point in pushing an angle like that. One of these Makoa, one of these um, Grover right clicks, and I could easily die with the amount of burst between three people. 
Now I hear that the Lian is pushing me, so I'm just going to push her aggressively right because I know I have my grenades available. Now this is very unfortunate, a very good hook and a cripple from the Grover and the Mako here. And just goes to show why I didn't push when I seen the three of them there, how fast you can actually die in a situation like that between the amount of CC they have. Now, at this point, I've gone into the full core rise and into the full resilience, which is going to be huge now against this Grover because the time that he's actually going to be able to capitalize off of hitting those right clicks on me is vastly reduced now. Nice kill onto the Yagarath here. We're going to fall back because there's no point in pushing here. We only have basically three of our team available, two of them still really far behind. Makoa is very lit here. We can try and push him. Unfortunately, the Lian manages to push in very deep and get a kill onto me here. Now we're going to lose our barrack as well. At this point, our team really just needs to fall back. There is no point in any of our team being aggressive, being pushed in to do anything at all. We just need to regroup. I'm going to pick up a life rip here because this, again, is going to make me a little bit more survivable to the Makoa hooks. So, of course, with the resilience, we can re save ourselves from the um, Grover right click, but nothing really helps against the Makoa. Um, hook except for the life rip this is going to make me a little bit more survival once he gets me it's going to mean that i can actually do a lot of damage to him and a lot more further damage to him than he would be able to do if i didn't have it obviously he could kill me very fast but if i have that sustainability it just helps me out a lot especially if i receive a heal from someone else because makoa's headshot hitbox is absolutely massive and very very easy to hit as a tyra player so he hooks you in you do consistently headshot damage to him with that life rip you're going to have a very not easy time, but a very good potential chance of actually getting away from the Makoa hook and surviving if not everybody else capitalizes on the hook. If the whole team looks at you when you get hooked, yeah, you're super screwed. But in these circumstances, if you can just try and cut away a little bit, then you can actually survive very well. Uh, Yagarath here, trapped in the corner. Go for the headshots. You can see how, how just insanely easy it is to headshot a Yagarath. Um, when you're playing characters like Tari, just aim for that lower section of the chin. And you can see why I thought it was so important to take the Tyra here instead of a character such as the um, Cassie, who doesn't have that headshot capabilities, because those headshots on someone like that is just absolutely ridiculous. Now, Yangrath pushing in. Of course, we're going to ulti here because our ulti is available. Unfortunately, I, oh no, I thought that was the end of the point fight there. Uh, insane beam coming out here from the Fuhrer, but unfortunately, the tanks do manage to stay on the point here. I knew this wasn't a push. I just thought it was ending a little bit earlier than that. Now, into the next item choices. Um, I've decided to go into Nimble here. This is, again, just a little bit of a counteraction to the Makawa hook. As we spoke about with the Life Rip, the Nimble achieves the exact same purpose when I get hooked in. I now have the resilience to stop any CC that they have. And now I have the movement speed to just push away as soon as I actually get hooked as well with the extra sustain of the life rip as well. So it's an absolutely massive difference here in terms of survivability now from the beginning of the game to the position we're in now. And you'll actually see as the game progresses, I do get a little bit more risky, a little bit more dangerous with my positioning because I now have these fail safes in place that allow me to do things that I previously I was not able to do. Again, same position here now. Uh, I'm very careful. I'm very wary of them pushing me because they know the position that I'm taking. If they continue to allow me to take this position, I will continue to take this position. They need to pressure me. They need to put pressure onto me. Uh, as soon as I see the Liam pushing in, I'm going to be aggressive against her and mark her because I'm the one that's going to be able to kill her and actually stop her from damaging my team. She uses an ult. We force herself back straight away. Fire down so she can't push from the left angle. And then we watch the right angle as we retreat away from them. Yagarath back onto the point. As you see, I'm way closer now than I was previously. Still falling back a little bit now, but just guaranteeing complete damage here. Uh, we should be able to burn the Yagarath here as long as we hit these headshots, which of course we do, uh, and then straight into the flames as well to burn them down. Unfortunately, we do lose one of our healers to the Lian as I concentrate on the Yagarath. That's something that I should have been a little bit more aware of. Uh, one of them now gets healed up by the Grover ultimate. That's a great ult to get procced. Uh, as the Makoa pushes in, I use my ultimate. This is to kind of spook him, to put pressure on him and to force him out so he can no longer put pressure on my damn butt because I didn't want to lose both of my supports in the back line. Uh, we have one pushing now in from the right side. I'm going to try and push her down and get damage onto her as much as possible. Unfortunately, keep missing the grenades on her here, which is very, very, very unfortunate because that increased damage would have made it a lot easier to kill her. But of course, I'm still getting my damage reduction from that anyway. So it's still a bonus to use that in that situation, even if you are missing the shots. Now, Yagarath back onto the point. Start trying to burn him down with the headshots. As soon as he uses his um, Q, we're going to just continuously shoot him. I should have reloaded there as he was in Q, so I was ready to do more damage once it finished. But uh, I was just kind of a bit greedy, to be honest. We get the uh, Grover killed here. Makoa has to push in to touch the points. We flame the point. The Lian has to push in with ultimate just to try and do something. And, of course, we turn back and we try and burst here as soon as possible. 
We're coming out, trying to hide out here. We're just going to try and burst him down as much as possible. If he doesn't have shield, we should be able to get a kill. Yep. If he had shield there, he might have been able to escape. But without the shield, he was just pretty easy. Uh, again, Yagarath now is just going to sit in my flames. We're going to burst him down as soon as possible. Now, the Yagarath, in my opinion, in this game, has kind of not really been uh, impactful at all. And I'll be honest, there's I don't think she is ever impactful in ranked. I think she's a That's terrible character in the moment. There's some people that can play her perfectly and it can work out. But she's just so easy to abuse as a character. Uh, I could hear the Liam pushing here, so I just walked in out against her. I knew I had some damage reduction available, so I was going to be able to win that fight in such a close range quarters against them. And that's the reason I was pushing there. Now I have a really nice position just to kind of kite from either way. I, there's no way that I can get pushed from behind. So the only way that I have to be careful is of the right side. They're not going to push the front of me. They'll push from behind to the right. And as long as I'm aware of cooldowns uh, in terms of, not cooldowns, sorry, respawn timers from the from uh, the enemy team, I know I'm going to be absolutely fine here. I get hooked straight into the damage reduction. Amazing knockback from the Ash. I wouldn't say it saved me per se because I think I would have got the kill there anyway, but it was definitely uh, helpful for the Ash to push in there. So great job from them. Grover Oil comes out, tries to save the Yagarath. Unfortunately, not quite enough considering the fact that we have, of course, the Court Rise level three. Now moving into the last point fight of the game, we're of course going to get all of our items fully maxed out here with the with the maximum nimble and the maximum life rip. This makes a fantastic change for us now uh, because we are very fast. And especially you'll see me in one of these fights now, I will use my ultimate purely for movement speed. Although it's an amazing ult for DPS, it also can be used as a pseudo escape for Tyra. You can also think of this as like an F on a Cassia dodge roll. You can use this ability just to increase your movement speed, just to get out of a situation that you don't want to be in which is what you'll see me do at some point in this point fight again we're going to push towards the left side of the map here if they're not going to push me here if they're not going to pressure me here consistently over and over again then i will continue to take this point um i was consistently telling my team to be aware that the mccoa might push yeah, me on the right. left as we can see the mccoa actually is going for the right hand side full la uh, full round flank you can see me taking a bit of a further back position making sure that i get an angle on him so that he's unable to push me without me being able to see him and dismount him because if he gets that close to me on mount he doesn't have to use his shell spin to attack me i'm going to be in a very bad situation if he manages to ult he can pretty much guarantee kill me we get two picks here our ash is very low um, she doesn't actually end up dying. Makoa ult is proc'd here, which is amazing for us. Pretty much takes away a lot of their retake potential. Now the retake potential lies solely on the Yagarath, and as we've seen yeah, throughout this love. entire game, the Yagarath is pretty much just pushing in and dying on the point consistently to my fire. Uh, as we get the Lian low here, I've tried to push just in. Wrong. As soon as I see the Makoa, I retreat straight out. If he gets the hook on me into the situation with that many characters, I'm 100% dead. Tried to save the barrack here. Fortunately, we managed to get it at the very last second. Uh, the Lian is trying to push me. And you can see, I'm just kiting away from them. I don't want to fight them. I don't have the grenades ready to fight them. I don't know if they have their ultimate available. It's not worth me taking that fight. So I just consistently kite around, even kiting into their back line because they're on our side of the map. Again, see them here. I'm just going to kite away. I'm going to use my ult for movement speed, literally just to get away in case they try to push me from the right side. Get a positional awareness of where they are. Flame the point. We're on now to the 99. They have to touch the point now. So all I have to do is take a nice angle to a position where if they try and touch the point, I can get damage on them. They can't really get damage on me. Um, the Leanne tries to push in, gets stunned out, has to retreat because she's so low on HP. Flame the point here with him gone, him so low. Now the Grover has to ult. This is pretty much the position where they're, they're just trying everything they have, throwing it all in last ditch effort. But so long as we continuously hold correct positioning here GG. and don't get picked, then it's a pretty much guaranteed win for us. And that was an absolutely amazing game, and I thoroughly enjoyed that one, considering we went 2-0 down straight away and actually managed to pull it all the way back from the very, very, very start towards the end of it. And we did, of course, get 212,000 damage in this one. 22-515, which is incredible amounts of DPS, but obviously most of this comes from farming onto the Yagarath, which was my main purpose of taking the Tyra, as we spoke about earlier. The headshot damage onto the Yagrath and the Makoa is just too amazing on Tyra versus some of the other characters we spoke about at the start that I could have taken instead of the Tyra. But this was, for me, definitely the correct choice to take. The one thing I would say about the match in potential is that I probably should have died a lot more within 24 minutes of play. Um, I think I should have died more to Makoa hooks and to other things such as pressure from the Leanne coming in with ults or pressure from the Yagrath coming in and ulting me as well or just consistently putting pressure on me and rolling after me. Thankfully though, as we said, with the item choices that I took, gave me a little bit of leeway in those situations. I think once I'd survived enough against these attacks, they kind of didn't want to keep pressuring me and dying to me over and over again. 
because obviously that's not going to be conducive for them winning the match. Anyway, ladies and gents, hope you've enjoyed this kind of style of, uh, of content. If you have, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. If this is popular enough and gets a lot of likes, I will try and do this in a little bit of a better fashion, get it set up to actually spectate games that I've played already to kind of give you guys more of positional awareness as well. And we can float around the maps and show you what I'm doing. But yeah, hope you all have an amazing day. And as always, I'll see you again tomorrow. Wah. Peace, everyone. Bye.